Right. Hi, Glenn. Just, uh, thank you for your time. And thank you for coming to this interview. Appreciate it. It's, uh, for me, uh, at the at the end of sort of last year is where my sort of through throughout doing the course, then starting to do this this year's course. The I don't know if it's just change of circumstances with um, obviously the gone in, onto internet learning and stuff like that, not being able to be in university in the studio doing and practicing what I wanted to, want to do. It my my passion for doing photography is it's it, it's been on decline mm. and it's getting that drive like i had in the first two years to to get up and go and do it it's that's so like i'm struggling to get back because i'm i find myself i'm overly critical of my own work like way too mm. overly critical well that's not such a bad thing i mean you you know i think you never stop learning i'm still learning now and uh, and i'm still making mistakes now you know, so you never stop. Uh, and but very often, if you you know when you've done a bad job, I know if I've done a bad job, um, and you have to accept it. You know, you have to think, okay, but that's never going to happen again. Hmm. You learn from it. And when I was talking earlier about earning, you know, you have to earn money when you leave uni. You have to earn that money. So if I were in your shoes now, I think. And this might sound really strange, but I'd be thinking, why don't I do weddings and charge 1,500 quid, 2,000 pounds for a wedding, mm. right? I used to do weddings for one thing, one reason, one reason only, was because I, and I only did, I promised myself every year I would do six, mm. no more, because I didn't want to be booked on a wedding and then someone phoned me and say, can you go somewhere? And I'm committed to the wedding. So I would only do six. But those six weddings, one wedding paid for a trip. Mm. That's the way I always looked at it. it. One, it's great practice because you're still looking for pictures in a documentary style. Mm. It does become a little bit for formulaic, but you are still looking for, to try and do something different, which is exactly the same as if you're in an African village. Mm. It's documentary. Yeah. It's it's waiting for a moment. It's waiting for a composition. So I found it really good practice. Number one, it kept my eye in. Number two, it earned me money. And number three, it earned me money that paid for, very often paid for a trip to Africa that I could work on a project or work for other people. So I don't know how long you've got. What two months to go? I mean, it, is it, it, go on. Sorry. How long have you got to go now? Um, I think it's to the yeah. end of May. I think that, that that's end of May, first couple months of May. So let's, let's, let's say it's two months. Yeah. There's no reason for you now, from today, to start touting for weddings, because hopefully weddings will come back hmm. in this summer or next summer. Build yourself up a portfolio. Don't commit yourself to be a wedding photographer. Yeah. Just commit yourself to earning some money hmm. so like, I, will, yeah like i'm doing I'm, I'm doing my friend's um wedding on the the 25th of the 25th of next month okay yeah that that has be my first wedding I've, I've told him that you know i'm just finishing uni up i've not done a wedding before so he knows what to expect and i i, I didn't want to charge him too much because obviously like, sure. i'm too overly overly critical of my own work so i don't rate myself that highly but other people have told me that my work is is pretty good whilst poor tell you, it's surprising how quickly you know you as i said just now as we said just now you never stop learning hmm. and your work will continue to improve and improve as it goes you know you're not the finished article now by a long way hmm. regardless you know you've gone through two or three years of uni that hasn't turned you into photographer no. You will start learning how to be a photographer at the end of May. Hmm. So also start doing projects for yourself. Start thinking of projects that you can work on yourself. Because then, again, you can produce zines, you can produce books. You don't have to go into big runs. You could, I produced 100 of that. I've done two zines, and they both 
they both made me money mm. you know in in long-term projects that really didn't cost me anything so and also then it's something i can show people because it's really important that if you start a project you finish it mm. and you don't sort of break down halfway i think oh, i can't be bothered so always do something that you're interested in otherwise you'll become bored yeah. and you won't finish it um but i would always have something on the go hmm. so always, it keeps your enthusiasm going always create little product projects for yourself and yet yeah, i'll tell you i've only just started this and it's it's a it's a funny little project but sometimes you know i'm thinking oh i just gotta go out for half an hour i just gotta get a bit of air a bit of space and there's a car park which is just down the road. It sounds a bit, it sounds a bit freaky now. I'm telling, saying it, but I'll just go down and I'll, I'll sit in the car park. From that, I've been there and I've noticed two small birds making a nest hmm. in a post. And then I'm looking, and there's all this rubbish around. There were like Foster Foster Lager cans and and chip packets around, you know. And I'm thinking, God, there's this lovely little. These two birds in a beautiful little, making their house in this post. And there's all these people act, act, acting like pigs, just coming down and chucking their litter. And, and I thought, right, I'm gonna do something on this. So I'm just gonna work in that car park for the next couple of weeks, couple of months. If I feel, if I feel like it's going down there, I'll just go down there and just look and see. And I got a lovely picture, a lovely picture yesterday of a rat. <laughs> And it's, it's the foster can, paper, and the rat is actually, oh, it's not paper, it's a mug. It's like a plastic cup. And the rat has gone into the cup. <laughs> All you've got is his arse coming out of the cup and his long tail next to the fosters. <laughs> well, it, it, just, it just says something to me about people, mm. you know. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. It's just something to keep, keep your mind ticking over you know i think i think that's that uh, like with, with me it's um i'm great when i'm working through a brief like yeah. uh as of like like the last couple of years uh, during uni when when the class has come up with a topic for our exhibition or something like, like that as soon as we've got this topic and got the name i can work to it like that but when mm. it's coming up with the project myself that's when my creative juices, they, they go all everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, you know, that project should start out only being for you, hmm. not for anyone else. You're doing it because you want to do it. So don't be think. you know, I find a lot of students, they, they're trying to be too heavy, hmm. subject matter that, that they're trying to, to do a story on, mental health, or you know, which is really, you know, important. But pe people are thinking too deeply, you know, uh, and the simplest of projects like a car park down the road can produce some lovely images and quite enjoyable to do. So you don't, you don't have to be thinking too deeply in what you do and just think of it as something for you to do at the, at the beginning and it could turn into something bigger, you know. Um, I'm, you know, I'm lucky because I've, you know, I've just had a big commission for the next three months on COVID vaccine. Mm. So that's that's gonna be, keep me going for a few months as far as work is concerned. And, and I'm loving doing it because I'm traveling all over Wales to, to do it. Um, so I've been lucky in that sense, you know, after 12 months of doing nothing, I've got a really nice commission to, to work on. Um, but it doesn't stop me thinking, oh, I'm gonna do a picture. I'm gonna do some pictures in this car park. I, I, I like your I like the way that you create little little projects for yourself and even they might seem odd or you said uh, when you were first describing it it's creepy but then it, say I say I was walking in a car park and I just saw you randomly taking pictures of the car I was like what's, what's this guy doing but it, if you go up to him and ask him what he's doing then he presents you with this this rat in a, in a cup sticking his tail out or this, this bird building a nest in his box you're like Wow, these are things I just haven't thought of looking at before. I've, I've been through this car park a hundred times. People use it, obviously, as a car park. They park their car 
and then they go up onto the canal and they walk their dog on the canal, you know, and they're talking to each other and they don't notice the diddly squat. Yeah. And yeah, just by going down there for just sat having a bottle of Coke or something and just looking, actually looking, there are all these things around us that are, that, that are there to be photographed. Yeah. If we just open our eyes and look. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I, I do like your the way your your outlook on the world. I I, I quite enjoy thinking about different things like that. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah I, go I, find I, yourself I, a car park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's quite there's quite there's a lot of strange projects. I remember I was talking to Celia, my tutor, and um, yeah. she was talking about this this girl who had a project. Uh, she presented these photos of different places, like there was by some bins, and then there was another one of a little corner of a car park. One was in an alley, and one was in the middle of a dark street. And at first, you're like, oh, what, what's, this, "What's this about? Is she got a night nighttime photography, or what's going on here?" Then, but then it was all all brought together with a title. It was rape sites. Yeah, and it hit. It just hit me. Yeah. It was it. It's it. She she. This this student had gone to the police and she'd gone to like these the uh, uh, general people's information, and and she'd found these like sites and it's this. It's just putting a, a story behind a picture like that. It's it flips your mind. I know it's, it's a dark subject, but it's. I think we've gone really. I think we've gone full circle here because we've come back to what I think is the most important thing about a photograph and that's the story. Yeah. Now you can do it in that way and keep people thinking what, what's this all about and then hit them with a title or you can try and tell a story like a rat in a plastic cup with a foster's can, you know, just the pigs that throw these things out there and it, it's attracting all of this, you know, the vermin around to, to, to eat whatever's there and, and within the confines of four hedges, really. Um, but it's the story, always come back to the story. Why am I taking this picture? Why am I telling this story? Why am I taking these pictures? Mm. And it's to tell the story of whatever it is. And I think I'm gonna be a little bit controversial now. And I think probably the best we finish then <laughs> is the fact that there is a new wave of photography over the last, five, eight, ten years, which is not necessarily new, which is more conceptual. Look at the picture and then read the story. Mm. And then do you relate to the pic? And I don't, mm. you know, I don't, because I, I think a picture should tell the story. Yeah. Now, with, with your rape site story, rape site story, that is powerful within itself. And, and when you know, then it becomes more powerful. But very often you see pictures that just mean nothing to me. It could be a tree with flash. Mm. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I want to be, I want to feel something. Like the guy who shook his head looking at the picture, which meant so much to me. That's how I want to feel when I'm looking at pictures. Yeah. I want to, I want to feel something from it. Um, so I don't go with the words old fashioned documentary which is very much what some people will label what I do. It's not old fashioned, it's just traditional. Mm. Um, and it will go on forever. Some people say, you know, it's finished and it's not finished. It will go on forever and ever and ever. You look in every newspaper and every magazine and every, not every, I mean, a lot of exhibitions. And, and also I, I always think, who am I actually taking a picture for? Mm. Am I taking this? Am I taking this picture for another photographer to tell me how wonderful it is, or am I taking this picture for Mr. and Mrs. Jones to learn something from? Mm. And every time it's for Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I'm not interested in what other photographers think, uh, as far as uh, as far as that's concerned. It's you know obviously it's lovely when people say, "Oh, I love that picture," or "I love that picture." Um, but I'm in it to show Mr. and Mrs. Jones what it's like in an African village 
And when you really look at it, it's exactly the same as Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Mm. Because I say it again, we're all the same. And that's really the basis of it, is telling stories to break down barriers, to raise awareness of these issues. Um, and if you can do that, then happy days. <laughs> Well, I think I think that's that's a I like I, I enjoyed the end of that. <laughs> but thank thank you very very much for your time, Glenn. I've, I've appreciated it so much. It's uh, it's, it's a hell of a lot to. Keep in touch, no problem. Thank you.